the statement of cash flows. And here we're going to look at the preparation of the statement of cash flows and how we have to do that for the exam. But before we get to the actual preparation of the statement of cash flows, we need to understand what the statement of cash flows is, some of the activities that we're going to categorize all of our cash transactions as, and kind of lay a foundation for the actual preparation of the statement of cash flows. So what we have with the statement of cash flows is it's one of the three main financial statements under US GAAP. We've got the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows as the three main financial statements. The statement of cash flows needs to be presented by all businesses, profit, nonprofit, public, private, all businesses whenever the company presents a balance sheet and an income statement. So you can't have two of the financial statements. If you have the balance sheet and the income statement, you need to have the statement of cash flows as well. And the statement of cash flows needs to be prepared for every year that the income statement is prepared for. Now the reason we have the statement of cash flows, as the name indicates, is its primary purpose is to give information about where the company receives its cash from and what the company spends its cash on, where the cash comes from and where the cash goes. That's what we're looking at with the statement of cash flows. Now what we're going to do here in the statement of cash flows is take every single transaction that the company entered into during the period that involved cash. We're going to take all of those cash transactions and present them in an organized way that's going to be useful for the people using the financial information, using the statement of cash flows. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those cash transactions and we're going to classify each of those transactions as one of three activities. And so we need to know what these three activities are and what's included in them. The three activities are operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Every single cash transaction that the company entered into during the year, whether we were receiving cash or spending cash, every single transaction is going to be classified as either an operating activity, an investing activity, or a financing activity. And so what we need to start with is what are operating activities? What is classified as, a, as an investing activity? What is a financing activity? Now, these questions can show up on the exam either very directly, where it says which of the following is a financing activity, which of the following is an investing activity, or it can be kind of indirectly, where they give a number of transactions, a number of pieces of information, and the question is, what is the cash flows from investing activities? In which case, you need to be able to go through that list and determine which of those events, which of those transactions were investing activities. So we need to start by understanding what are operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities? So we'll start with operating activities. And even though we start with operating activities, we almost should be ending with operating activities. This is the first category that's presented on the statement of cash flows. But what is included in operating activities is every transaction that is not classified as investing or financing. So you look at the transaction, you say, is this investing? No. Is this financing? No. Well then, it must be operating. Okay. Operating includes everything that is not financing or investing. Now, as the name indicates, what we're talking about is our operations, the process of buying our inventory, buying our raw materials, converting them into the finished good, and selling them. And so we're looking here at our, what we pay to suppliers, what we pay to employees, what we pay for our factory, what we receive from our customers. Okay, that's what we're looking at with operating activities. Now, we said that this is everything that's not investing or financing. There are some specific items that we need to be aware of that are classified as operating activities. Interest paid on bonds and other debt is an operating activity. Interest received and dividends received is an operating activity. If we make our investments, interest received and dividends received is an operating activity. Now, you may sit there and think, well, what about dividends paid? Well, dividends paid is not an operating activity. We'll see that in a couple of minutes. Cash flows from the purchase, sale, and maturity of trading securities are considered an operating activity. Trading securities are an operating activity. And finally, cash paid to the government for taxes and any cash received back from the government as a tax refund is classified as an operating activity. So interest paid, interest and dividends received are operating activities. Trading securities and taxes are operating activities. 
What about investing activities? Well, as the name indicates, these are the activities the company undertakes to get a return as an investment, generating future profit. We're going to spend the money now, and the return is going to come over time in the future. Okay? So investments, as we understand them. Some specific examples. Purchasing and selling fixed assets. Now, we don't make fixed assets in the same way we invest in shares of another company, but the fixed asset is an investment in the future. We're spending money now so that we have long-term production capabilities. Okay? So purchasing and selling fixed assets are investing activities. Making and collecting loans to other parties. Not us borrowing money from the bank, but a company coming to us and we loan them money and then hopefully we collect that money. Acquiring and disposing of stock, shares of other companies. Acquiring and disposing of debt instruments. We're talking here about us making an investment. And acquiring and disposing of available for sale or held to maturity securities. Okay. Fixed assets, loans that we make, and investments that we make are the investing activities. The financing activities. These are how we raise money, how we finance the business. Okay, when we're raising money to finance our business. The examples, the issuance of stock, treasury stock transactions. And here it is, paying dividends. Dividends paid are a financing activity. Dividends received are an operating activity. Issuing debt, issuing bonds, the repayment of debt obligations, and obtaining and repaying a loan. Okay? So operating, investing, and financing. Investing and financing, rel relatively self-explanatory. Operating is everything else, everything that is not classified as investing or financing. Now, as we looked at these investing and financing activities, we saw that there were two sides to a transaction, two sides to each of these activities. We said that buying fixed assets and selling fixed assets, making a loan and collecting a loan, borrowing the money and repaying the money. We have two kind of directions, two sides to all of these investing and financing activities. Now, the general rule is that those two sides are presented separately, which means in the investing section, there's going to be one line that says cash used to purchase fixed assets, and another line that says cash received from the sale of fixed assets. We don't net those two together. Okay, they are generally presented separately. It gives better, more complete information for the user. Now, there are some situations in which they are netted together, but that's outside the scope of the exam. And having just said that we, this, we report them separately, it's very possible that in an exam question, especially a multiple choice question, what they're going to ask is the net cash flows, in which case you will take the inflows and the outflows and put them together. But in the presentation on the statement of cash flows, they should be presented separately. Okay? Both sides of the transaction presented separately. Now, another thing that we need to look at are what are called non-cash investing and financing activities. Now, this is, again, very descriptive. This is an investing or financing activity transaction, but it didn't involve cash. Okay? It didn't involve cash. Now, examples of this, just kind of converting debt to equity. Well, when you convert the debt, you're kind of repurchasing the debt, and when you convert it to equity, you're issuing shares. Buying or selling fixed assets for something other than cash. You buy fixed assets by issuing stock. Well, the purchase of the fixed asset is an investing activity. The issuance of stock is generally a financing activity, but there was no cash. Okay? Obtaining a building or other item by gift. Buying a fixed asset by obtaining a loan. Okay? These are investing, financing activities, and potentially very large ones. These could be very large amounts. But if there is no cash, they don't go into the statement of cash flows. Because if you buy a building by issuing stock, what's the statement of cash flows? Cash used to purchase building? Zero. Cash received from the issuance of stock? Zero. So these non-cash investing and financing activities are presented separately in a schedule at the end of the statement of cash flows. So we have the statement of cash flows, and at the bottom of that, 
There's the schedule of non-cash investing and financing activities. They are not cash transactions, so they don't get into the statement of cash flows itself, but they are investing in financing activities and they are potentially very significant. And if we look at that situation where we buy a building by issuing shares, couldn't we just issue the shares and collect the cash and then use that cash to buy the building? If we did that, both of those transactions would be on the statement of cash flows. The fact that we bought the building by issuing the shares, that was kind of a management decision. That was a management decision not to go through two transactions, but just do one. And so those non-cash investing and financing activities don't go into the statement of cash flows because there is no cash, but they are reported as in a schedule at the end of the statement of cash flows. Now, one other thing we need to look at, cash equivalents and how cash equivalents are presented on the statement of cash flows. They're not on the statement of cash flows. Cash equivalents, highly liquid, short-term investments with a maturity of three months or less when we acquire it. Companies buy and sell cash equivalents all the time. An overnight deposit, a week deposit, a deposit for a month. Those are all cash equivalents. If we were to put into the statement of cash flows, cash received from the sale of cash equivalents, cash, cash used to purchase, it'd be a huge number for a company that does this a lot during the period. And so cash equivalents, and the transactions to convert cash into and out of cash equivalents are not reflected on the statement of cash flows. You can kind of look at cash equivalent as just another form of cash. Okay, so cash equivalent and transactions converting, purchasing, and, and selling cash equivalents are not shown on the statement of cash flows. Now, we've gone through the activities, operating, investing, and financing, and you need to know what is included in each of those. This is also a time where we need to look at one of the notes connected to IFRS and how IFRS is a little bit different in respect to the statement of cash flows. The main difference between U.S. GAAP and IFRS for the statement of cash flows is the classification of activities. U.S. GAAP is very specific. This is how it's going to be classified. IFRS provides a little bit more flexibility. First, interest and dividends received under IFRS can be classified as either an operating or investing activity. They want the accountant to look at this transaction and say, was this transaction made as part of operations or investing? And whether it was more connected to operations or investing is going to determine how it's classified on the statement of cash flows. Interest and dividends paid can be classified as either an operating or financing activity. Again, the accountant has to look at this and determine, is this more an operations process or was this a financing process? Okay, what was the reality of that specific transaction? And last, under IFRS, non-cash investing and financing activities are in the notes to the financial statements. They're not in that schedule at the end of the statement of cash flows. Okay, under IFRS, those non-cash investing financing activities in the notes to the financial statements. Okay, this is our overview of the statement of cash flows. You need to know the activities and what's included in each of them. Operating, investing, and financing. As I said, this is something that can be tested directly or indirectly, but you need to know this connected to the statement of cash flows.